This is our second video on momentum, and we're going to start where we left off, sort of talking about um, center of mass velocity. And, and most notably, what we're going to remember is that that stays constant. with zero external force. And for now, we're going to assume that we're always going to be dealing with zero net external force. So, um, what I'd like to do is imagine a system of two objects. One five kilograms moving at 10 meters per second because they're easier numbers to work with. And the other one um, also five kilograms and this one we're going to say is at rest the two objects are going to hit and for now we're just going to say that they stick together we have five and five overall we want to know what happens after they hit <clears throat> and so what we're going to do is look at the velocity of the center of mass for the system so here um, velocity of the center of mass is mass one times the velocity one plus mass two times velocity two over m one plus m two and what we're going to say is that afterwards these things are equal to each other so whatever mass one is now doing because at both times it's going to be the velocity center mass afterwards at both times what we see is that the velocity center mass has to be the same because there's zero net external force acting on this system. The two objects hitting each other are um, part of the same system. So mathematically, when this is an equality, this part crosses out. And we get this relationship right here. Uh, M1 V1 plus M2 V2 equals M1 V1 prime plus M2 V2 prime. telling me about the quantity that each object has before it hits and that the quantity that each object has after they hit. And the total amount of that quantity before equals the total amount after. Well, this quantity, uh, mv, is called momentum. It's inertia, mass, uh, of moving times velocity. In equations, we use a P to talk about momentum. I'm um, going out on a limb, but I think it's because Newton called it the purposeful motion of an object. Uh, take that however you want it to be. So, uh, momentum 1 plus momentum 2 is equal to momentum 1 prime after the collision plus momentum 2 prime. Or, P total to begin with is equal to P initial is equal to P final. What we have is the conservation of momentum. Which states, and you can write this down, that as long as the external force is zero, the total momentum of the system is conserved. It's the same thing as saying the center of mass is constant with a zero net external force. Um, let's just look at this one real quick. See what happened. So, <clears throat> if you want to, you have mass one, five kilograms times 10 meters per second, plus mass two, five kilograms times zero, and that's equal to, they're stuck together. So mass one plus mass two, and we see we have 50 over 10, the velocity of the center, well, the velocity of these two objects after they hit and stick to each other is 5 meters per second. If you were to calculate the velocity of the center mass, you'd also see that it's 5 meters per second. This is a special type of collision. So, what we're going to do, for the most part, is work a lot with this equation. Okay. And in the instance that two objects stick together, 
you got m1 v1 plus m2 v2 equals m1 plus m2 because they're stuck together times whatever final velocity they have. We're going to be working with these two equations. And for the most part, when you see this one, you're going to have only one unknown velocity. Um, we will talk next video about what happens when we don't have that. Now this is going to work for all sorts of collisions. Let's talk about the types of collisions that there are. So, we will get three collisions of the same two objects. Um, our five kilogram blocks sliding into each other. This time, uh, to be nice, that one's going at two meters per second. And this one is going at two meters per second in the opposite direction. Now, I'm not going to make you find it here. You can do it by inspection, but looking at this, the velocity of the center of mass is equal to zero. <clears throat> so, what we do is look at three things. The first one, they hit and stick together. No, five kilograms and five kilograms, and they hit and stick together. <clears throat> and if we look at what happens as far as um, action about the center of mass, hit and stick. Okay, so we do our little conservation of momentum. Five times two plus five times negative two is equal to 10 times that velocity. Well, that tells me that the velocity afterwards is equal to zero. When we have a collision where two objects hit and stick together, or they both move off with the velocity of center of mass, say so both move with the velocity of the center of mass, this is a special kind of collision, and we call it completely or perfectly inelastic. The object's stuck and they no longer have any velocity with respect to the center of mass. We'll say velocity with respect to the center of mass is zero. They came in with two meters per second each, they hit and stuck together, the velocity with respect to the center of mass is zero. The next one we have is that the two objects hit we'll say this one moves away with the speed of one meter per second and we'll see what this one does. So we've got uh, five times two plus five times negative two is equal to five times negative one plus five times V. Nice thing is all these fives go away and we see that that velocity comes out to be one meter per second in this direction. Now we know that the velocity of the center of mass of these systems is the same, but they're moving with less speed than they came in with. They've lost some stuff. They haven't stuck together. So they move with less speed with respect to the center of mass than they did before. <clears throat> this type of collision is called plain old inelastic. The objects hit and they lose something. They're not moving as fast with respect to the center of mass as they moved before. The next one, and by far the most interesting, is when the objects hit and they bounce off of each other. So we have our five kilogram objects moving away with the same speed with respect to the center of mass that they had coming in. You can check it. Conservation of momentum still is true for this. Um, but what we see is that both objects have the same speed 
with respect to the center of mass as they did before. It's just in opposite directions. Their velocity with respect to the center of mass reverses. They bounce off completely and don't lose anything. We call this elastic. Now, some interesting things about each of these. With elastic, we have no kinetic energy loss. And with each one of these, we do have loss. So we lose kinetic energy and we lose kinetic energy. Um, most books classify just elastic collision based on no kinetic energy loss and inelastic as loss of kinetic energy. Completely inelastic is when they stick together. Originally, um, when Huygens and Descartes did this, elastic was when they didn't lose any energy with respect to the center of mass. Inelastic is when they lost some speed uh, with respect to the center of mass and completely inelastic was when they lost all of their speed with respect to the center of mass. Um, as it stands, these two cannot be solved unless you have more information. We'll talk about the special case of this tomorrow, uh, but most collisions are going to fall into this spectrum. Sorry, all of our collisions are going to fall into this spectrum. They get a little bit more complicated when we solve for elastic collisions, but that's a very special case, and really we're not going to have to do too much of that. I do think it's interesting enough to show you. Um, but most of what we're doing with momentum is just using conservation of momentum. That's it. So, uh, having said, that's it.